everybody, it's Joel from the Board Game Mechanics. Today I'm taking a look at Raids from Yellow Games. Uh, this is kind of a cool one, a little bit lighter, but we'll check it out uh, here on the table and then I'll give you some final thoughts. Uh, but before we do that, let's just uh, real quick just say thank you to all you guys for watching and thank you for 2018 being an amazing year for the Board Game Mechanics. Um, if you're a subscriber, thank you again. Uh, this has been an awesome year, a lot of growth this year, uh, just been amazing. If you aren't a subscriber, man, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe. So you can do that. You know, I mean, like it's 2018 again. Like you know how to work YouTube, I'm sure. So just subscribe. Um, if you like podcasts, we do that as well. Uh, we have a podcast over bgmechanics.com. You can also find us on Board Game Geek or wherever you find podcasts. Uh, that's it, guys. Let's get to the table and take a look at raids, though, right now. Uh, we'll start off by taking, talking about the components real quick. These meeples, these Viking meeples, very cool. Uh, rustic wood looking. The axes, as they see, they seem like they'd be fragile, but they don't really seem like they're going to break off. They seem pretty uh, formidable. Your ship meeple, really cool looking as well. They could have gone with like a generic looking ship, but they went with a real more Viking looking ship. So that's that's as far as I know, custom for this game. I haven't seen that other places. There's tiles on the on the board, nice cardboard. Everything's made out of really good cardboard. Just great component quality. What you'd expect out of a yellow game. The one component that I'm going to just mention real quick that is just really, really great are these coins. These coins are amazing. Um, they're metal. They have really cool, like, I guess it's like more like a, a, a I don't know, a Celtic looking kind of like design on them. But it looks like it could be Viking as well. So uh, a really cool set of coins there. Oh, so uh, let's go to the gameplay here. Gameplay. It's basically, uh, in some ways, it's similar to a game like Takedo, where your turn order is going to be based on where you're at on the board. Um, and that the person who's trailing behind always is going to be the one that goes next. So um, the thing that is different about this one is it has a catch-up mechanism um, and a kind of fight mechanism that are new to this game. Um, and let's just kind of see how that plays out. So the first player would be this orange player. Um, and the way how our board's set up, there's a bunch of different possibilities for them to go to. They can go really to any space they want to go to. Just they're going to be sacrificing, missing out on a lot of chances to get points and things if they if they jump too far ahead. Well, I'm going to say that the orange player has a choice here. Uh, this is a this is a rune. Those runes, they basically, the more of them you get, the more points you get. So if you can get five of those by the end of the game, you get 15 points. If you get, uh, you know... Less than that, you get less than that. But, I mean, we'll take a real quick look at that. That's some glare there for you, isn't it? Um, so, look, your first one you get's worth one, second's three, third six, and so on. So, it's worth getting those um, for sure. But I don't think he wants to get that because the city wants to get this this weapon up here. So, if you see that as a weapon, a weapon counts as, like, an always available to you um, Viking. So, so Vikings are going to fight monsters. We're going to talk about that in a second here. Um, Vikings are going to also help us to bump people out of places that we really want. So having that weapon is going to be really important for us to have uh, when we do combat against the monsters and stuff. So uh, that's really important for them to have. I think they really want that. So we're going to go ahead and, yeah, we're going to leave that there. Um, the, the next person's going to come out, okay? And um, since these two are tied, we don't need to clear out the spaces between the last player, last place person in the pack of ships. So um, that's going to hang out there for a little bit. Um, but you know what? Actually, he does want the rune because he's going to try and collect those. So now, again, there's no need to clear anything out. We'll talk about that in a second. But that's a different mechanism in this game, too. That the, the things that happen between the second to last position player and the last position player get cleared out, which is a different thing. It kind of keeps you from just dilly-dallying and just kind of cherry-picking everything behind the whole pack. It makes you keep up. So, uh, kind of a cool mechanism there. Um, the thing that I also, also I really like about this game is this. In Takedo, so many times someone would take the space that I really, really wanted, and then I'm just I'm at a loss. I can't do anything about it. Well, in this one, let's say I really needed that weapon. Well, I'm going to go here as the blue player. The other kind of cool thing is, is you know, like, I have more Vikings than them. So I can decide I'm going to fight them. And then they can retaliate. They can try and fight me back. Um, but, you know, maybe they don't want to do that. So they can just flee and go to another spot. Well, 
I think really honestly, the more important thing to do at this point would be to go actually as a blue player to go get some cargo. So I don't think we're going to try and bump them out of there, but there is a possibility to do that. So I think the blue play, the blue player would want to go up here to get some cargo. Those pigs are worth five points. If we can get to a port later in the game, we could sell those pigs. We'll get five points. Also, there's times where having the most cargo that you've sold or traded is going to get you bonuses in certain in certain locations as well. So anyway, we're going to keep going on this board, uh, doing those kinds of things. Um, the next player, the green player, I'm going to show you that they would want to go all the way past this village here and see this symbol. I mean, say recruit a Viking. So you're going to put a Viking into your board, into your into your longboard there, or longboat, longboard. And um, this this right here is kind of interesting too. That's uh, Thor's hammer, Moldner, Moldner. Man, I can't I'd say that for anything. Um, Moldner. Okay, so anyway, uh, Molnir, however you want to say it. Uh, that's going to give me one point for every Viking at the end of the game. So that's a good in-game scoring kind of thing to keep my Vikings up, and then I can score lots of points for that. There's better, more powerful versions of that that are going to come out in other phases of the game, but who knows if I'm going to be able to get them or not. So I think that's worth getting. So something else that I just I missed is we start our turn by taking these things that we had that were where we were at. So you, you start your turn by taking the thing. Oftentimes you move, then get the thing. This one you get the thing, then move. So uh, the orange player then would take this, and put these, put this right just on top of their, you know, here's their, here's their ship. They put it right there on top. Well, you know what? You, you lost a shield spot by doing that, but that's okay. You have a, you have a, a weapon there that's going to help you do better at, at combat. Uh, so, so then the thing that's going to happen here though is, I'm going to show you this. There's, that right there comes out of the game because it was between the second, the last player and the last player. So now this person has a choice of, do I want to go fight for those pigs? Probably not. Um, I'm going to skip past this. Do I want to fight for that? Uh, maybe not. Now, look, I've got a beast here. I have to pass that. That arrow means I have, pass. I have a choice now. If I pay the three to fight it and defeat it, I get three points at the end of the game. Or I can just have one Viking go be wolf food, and I can go past it. And that's, I think, the choice that this person would make. I mean, Vikings are pretty pretty scarce at this point. So I think I would probably go ahead and just get rid of the one Viking, not worry about the points, and go get the cargo, or maybe the rune. Um, but that would be their choice that they had to make on which of these things do I want. Um, so now we're back to this blue player. He's in the last place now again. So he's got to make the same choice, or a similar choice. He takes his Viking when he passes there, um, and he's got to decide if he wants to fight that or not. Well, he might want to fight it, so he's going to fight it next turn. Um, but you do as you go past. You don't stop there. Which kind of cleans up some things. So he's going to go ahead and fight and, and defeat that. Which the green player breathes a sigh of relief kind of because they don't have to pay for that now. But they're going to go ahead and go up to these runes. We're playing nice. We're playing very friendly. Um, and that's going to keep going until we pull into the ports at the end. Um, when we pull into the ports, um, if you have sails. So these sails here are going to let you recruit more Vikings. There's a lot of sails towards the end there. Um, also there's a condition of how, how do we decide who gets the most points to the least points. Based on this right here, there's a bunch of these different tiles. This one says, you know, whoever has the most, um, whoever's done the most uh, with ports, whoever has the most sails, most shields, um, things like that. Um, so uh, it's just kind of a kind of a neat, a neat way to do this game. That you have different ways that you're going to earn more more money, which translates directly into points at the end of the game. Really, that's all that money is used for is to get points. So the first ship to pull in there this time will get six points. They also use kind of a last in first out mechanism, kind of a catch up mechanism maybe. Um, that you get a ton of points for coming in first, but then you get to check, kind of get your choice on things as you pull out. So we all we always we're doing these laps, but we always kind of get back together at that port there. Um, another kind of cool thing is we go around this board four times. That's how this game works, is that we play four rounds. Well, I like this a lot, actually. So the one tiles are on there. They look like this. Just real basic, like wooden, hey, we're just learning how to build. And then in the two, it's like, hey, our technology has gotten better. So we're building a little bit better, you know. And that, believe it or not, is a two. Well, let's see if I can get it to focus a little better for you. Yeah, two. And then threes, we're, we're getting even better. And fours, we're, we're making some ornate, you know, stuff. I just think that's kind of a cool little detail there that they include in this game. Um, 
So overall, it's a pretty close to a, a, what I would call a filler game, but it has some good, meaningful decisions that you have to make in there. Um, and it's just a neat way that you balance having Vikings with getting these tiles to add to your ship or add to your tableau in front of you. Um, I really do like this game quite a bit. I'm going to give you some final thoughts on it now. All right, so that was a rough overview of the game. Uh, I mean, not even a rules explanation for you guys. Um, it's not a complex game. It's pretty simple. You should be able to figure it out pretty quickly if you think this is for you. Um, I, it's just a, it's just a really neat little, almost filler game. It's just such a quick little game. You can play it in half an hour, um, especially once you know what you're doing. Probably even less than that. It's just a cool palate cleanser between heavier games. If you listen to our podcast. Uh, or have seen a, some of our other reviews. We tend to really like lean towards heavier games that take you know hours to play. Um, this one to us, uh, Jason loves this game as well. It to me feels like a really good uh, between uh, main courses bit of like sorbet. You know what I mean to like wipe that palate clean and just kind of do something different and fun to just get yourself ready to play that next big heavy game. Um, it's super light. It's just not a ton to it mechanically. However, there are important decisions that you have to make in there, and more so than other games that are similar to it, such as like uh, Takedo. Takedo is a game that, um, to me, this game beats. I don't like Takedo a ton, and it is going to get compared to Takedo because it has that going on a journey, and the last player goes next kind of thing. The things this one does that I like better than Takedo are the fact that you can always get the spot you want. I mean, unless unless it gets pulled off the board because you're the behind the pack. But like, if someone goes to a place you want to get, you can get it. It's just going to cost you something. Um, or at least you can make it cost more for them, which kind of feels better too. Uh, so um, that's kind of cool. It adds the little like Viking thing to it. The Viking theme is awesome. I really do love the Viking theme a ton. Um, Vikings are just a fun theme. Uh, there's a lot of good Viking games out there. Champions of Midgard, um, you know, uh, raids, a lot of just really cool uh, games out there that are these great Viking theme games. Um, so the Viking theme is just a really cool one. Um, we are seeing this theme a lot, but this one feels like a Viking game. You're, you're sailing through the seas, pillaging, uh, trying to recruit new Vikings, trying to make yourself the most noteworthy Viking in the area. So I think this one really does the theme well. It's not tacked on at all. This one, I don't think it could be anything but a Viking game. Um, honestly, it's just a really, really good feeling uh, Viking game. So uh, what do I think about this game? Well, let's take a look at the pros and the cons here real fast. Um, this is a new take on the familiar. By that, I mean that, you know, I mentioned Takedo, where that, that player turn order thing comes into place. This one kind of takes that idea um, and like shifts it a little bit in ways that I do like. The board setup being different every time um, is another way that they shift that, and that's a definitely a big pro, um, that you know the tiles come out in a different order every time. Um, whereas on like Takedo, um, it kind of comes out the same every time. So um, I don't know. It's a different game than Takedo for sure, but I kind of felt like some sense of this is a little like Takedo to myself the whole time I was playing it. Um, so... I don't know, does this, does this fire Takedo? It might, honestly. Um, we'll see. So um, the theme on this is really great. I really do love how the, the Vikings theme really does just work. It's uh, the ships going around, doing their thing. It's just a really cool theme. It works really well. I, I just It does. It just works. Going on a voyage and trying to make your ship better and make your clan of Vikings better. It just works. It's a theme that just works really well and integrates with the mechanics of this game just so well. Um, the component quality on this, I'm going to say is top notch. This has got over the top components on it. So this definitely could have been done with a deck of cards, like small, those small, like, uh, you know, ticket to ride, small card size cards on a board that could have saved some money. Instead, they give us good cardboard tiles and the cardboard tiles are awesome. Um, they just feel good to put onto your ship. They feel good to, uh, you know, handle. And then the art on the cardboard is really good as well. Um, the board has great art. I mean, yellow just does great art, and this is no exception. The art in this game is fin fantastic. I mean, just really great art, and it makes it more enjoyable to play. The art's that good. This game's really simple, too. This is something that you can play with kids. I'm sure that you could play this with an 8-year-old, maybe even 7-year-old, depending on the family. Um, it's just not that hard of a game to figure out. I mean, there's a few different kind of tiles that you have to understand to be able to figure it out. Um, there's some kind of exception rules and things that happen in different places. Uh, they're like fighting each other. It gets a little mean at times. So there's a possibility that a kid, that uh, a youngster that, you know, 
uh, doesn't like mean games, might not enjoy this, but it's not super mean, and there's ways to play that aren't mean. So um, overall, there's a lot of really great positive things that are going on here. Uh, the only cons that I have are you go around that board four times when you play this, so it gets a little repetitive. I mean, it's just kind of move and take something, move and take something. And so it gets a little repetitive over time, but the game doesn't outstay its welcome. It's quick. So it's not like you're doing that for four hours. If this game were five rounds, maybe even six rounds, uh, it would it would definitely overstay its welcome. At four rounds, it's okay. It does get a little repetitive. It's not terrible, though. And the fact that every time you go around the board, there are different and unique tiles that have different things incorporated into the game is really cool. So the fact that those markets come in later and kind of make it so you can get points that way, um, the the better sales, the better or the better the better uh, hammers later in the game, just stuff like that are just really positive things that that can keep the game fresh, even though it is kind of repetitive and you're doing several rounds um it does it does kind of feel the same a little bit after a while even though you are getting new things out um not horribly though at all and uh and then the game is simple which if you want a complex viking game that's going to feel like you're really developing a fleet of viking ships and going out and trying to you know live the life of a viking this one's probably not it it does feel like a viking game the components and and the uh, theme and the art and the mechanics all do mesh together really well and it does feel like it's a Viking game, but it doesn't feel like a Viking game like you would get like on a full computer simulation type strategy game. It feels like a mobile handheld version of a Viking game, um, which isn't bad. I mean, simple games are perfectly fine, but you're not going to get that super rich gameplay. So that's why I put simple on both the pro and the con. If you like simple games, this one's awesome. This is the simple Viking game that you need in your life. If you want a more complex, heavier Viking game, maybe it's not for you. Um, if you just like good games, it's for you. It's a good game. It's a really good game overall. So um, this one's going to stay in my collection. It's going to be around for a while. Um, how, did it, how did it do? Well, here at Board Game Mechanics, we do a wrench rating system. Five wrenches is a game that's just, man, everybody should own that game. Unless you are a select few people that are niche and, and just, you know, it's for you. If you're at a four wrench, I think about 55 to 75 percent of people out there would benefit from owning this game if they have a board game collection. Um, threes and belows are games where it's like we really need to say who it's for, who the specific audience would be for this. So how broad is the appeal of this game? Where do I think it's at? If I get a four wrench or higher, it's accepted by us as a game that most people need. Uh, or should benefit from having. I guess you don't need anything. Um, so uh, the board game mechanics, I give this one four out of five wrenches. This one gets the approval rating where I think over half the people out there watching this video who are board gamers and enjoy playing board games would benefit from owning this game, would have a time to play it in their collection. So I think it's a good game overall. I, I really do enjoy it. Um, I think the other thing too is it is going to get repetitive and it's not going to have the replay value that of other games have. However, that said, this game's in a small enough box, it's a filler type game, and it's not going to be hard to remember. So this is one of those games that you could play it three, four times, say, yeah, you know what, I've had my fill of that one for a while, I might be done with it for this season of life, put it on the shelf, let it sit there for a while, pull it back out in four or five months, because it's not going to be hard to remember the rules in this game. You can get it back out and figure it out again, and it will be a fun game to have. It'll have broad appeal to a lot of different gaming groups, too. So if you're having, you know, like the family over, and you're playing Ticket to Ride with them, and then you want to finish off the night with something a little different, this one does that. Um, if you're playing with a heavy group, gaming group, and you want to, between games, do something that's a little, like, less intense, a little chance for people to, you know, like, maybe step out of a game, and a few of you want to play something to fill at the time, this is a great game for that. Um, with kids, you can play with that. So it has broad appeal. It's that broad appeal that's going to keep it around. Even if you don't want to play it all the time, though, I think there's going to be opportunities to play it all the time, consistently. Um, so even if it sits on the shelf for a few months at a time, even, because you're, you're tired of it for that season, I think it could get back out pretty quick and you could play it again. I think for that reason, um, amongst other things, this one is going to hang in my collection. And if I have to get rid of one of the two games that I've been comparing this to, if I have to get rid of Raids or Takedo, at this time, I would rather have Raids in my collection than Takedo. Um, Takedo is a perfectly fine game, but I think Raids does to me what Takedo does. Um, and it feels better to me. If you like Takedo, awesome. If you like Takedo and you think it's your jam and you don't want this one, I'm not going to judge you. Like, that's cool, man. Like, you you have a different preference than me. Um, but my preference on this is raids. Um, and if you love these kinds of games, there's definitely room for both these in your collection because they're both really good games. They're both um, certainly worth keeping around for sure. So um, that all said, four out of five wrenches. This one's going to hang around my collection for a while, and I look forward to playing it. 
Um, and I think this one will be around for a while. So that's it, guys. Um, I've been Joel. If you've liked what you've seen here, uh, maybe give us a thumb. Maybe give us a little comment. Um, and think about subscribing. And if you want to hear more of our, our stuff, I get like way sillier and crazier and whatever on the podcast. Um, we've been doing that for a while now. I think I'm a little more comfortable there maybe. So um, if you want to check out our podcast, go to bgmechanics.com and you can find that. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, keep gaming. Keep watching these videos. We love that you guys are here. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, that's it. I've been Joel. Keep gaming.